We are in studio with a person who doesn't mind debating the Oxford comma with John Gilstrap. This is the first <laughs> time I can honestly tell you in any pre-interview discussion the Oxford comma has come up. Randall Reed Smith, he's a cabinet secretary, Department of Arts, Culture, and History. Randall, welcome to the program. I've been told for years I've got to get you on the show, and today is that day. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here, and I think we agree on the Oxford comma. Oh, absolutely. I don't know. It's very important. The question out there is, among the masses... Who in the heck knows what the Oxford comma is? And that's a sad, sad... Our, our producer, thing. Colin, knows what it is. Oh, he does wonderful. Yeah, he had if, a good teacher. If you're listing three or more things, you have A, comma, B, and C, the Oxford comma would go between B and the word and. But it's no longer... Well, it depends. ...something that's required it, it by many grammarians. It depends on the style. Variants. Yes, it depends on the and style And this book. offends you to no end. Well, I, I happen to be a fan of the Oxford comma because I notice when it's missing. <laughs> well, you know what's really offensive? What's that? Is they do not teach cursive handwriting. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. And haven't for a while. Oh, well, it is. it has come back in certain grade levels this year. And so, and I practice every day. I have my little book, and I get a letter, and I practice. Because in fourth grade, when I was growing up in West Virginia, you had to have pass a writing test oh, yeah, we're all too young I to did, remember i that. did too but this is what you get so that's you know, okay. it's not all yeah my my cursive has deteriorated greatly over the years i, sh I will bring you my book the next time you need flow. you, you can practice flow. one well you're supposed to do circles yeah circles, you got a flow I, whoosh, I don't have good flow whoosh. any longer well <laughs> that's starting to sound and like it's a good commercial. for arthritis too to practice so. uh let's talk about your position here because you've been elevated to cabinet secretary how did that come about well, cabinet level, I should say. Uh, so we uh, just let me give a real quick history. So I was telling uh, your colleague here that the building was built in uh, 1976 by Governor Moore. 77, the Department of Culture and History came into existence, and it was a commissioner. And then when Gaston Caperton became governor in uh, 88, he was elected. 89, in 90, he created the Department of Education, the Arts, and then Culture and History was down level to a division mm -hmm. so back in 2018 they were looking at uh you know streamlining the arts and so they did some legislation eliminated education the arts and they created the department of arts culture and history and they were sort of going to siphon us here and there and the governor said no we're going to have a department of the arts and we're going to put randall in charge so mm -hmm. i've been doing this since 2018 they just elevated it and we now have a cabinet secretary level position for our department we're one of 13 cabinet secretaries in the state of west virginia so so you are in charge of doing what exactly? So I have the West Virginia State Arts Office, the West Virginia State Archives, the West Virginia State Museums. I have the West Virginia State Historic Preservation Office. I'm by statute the West Virginia State Historic Preservation Officer. We have educational broadcasting. We have all 170 public libraries. We have volunteer services. We have the National Coal Heritage Area Authority, and we have uh, uh, five boards underneath us and uh the, the newest one is the america 250th the semi-quincentennial commission in west virginia and that's very exciting and what brings you to the eastern panhandle this week uh tomorrow we have the final regional for academic showdown uh the senate president of course is from ural's district uh, senator blair i met him i've been at this 19 years met him when i first started and he always talked about doing quiz bowl he, quiz he bowl. loves that yeah. he absolutely loves it so in 2010 as we were building up to the west virginia sesquicentennial i started the west virginia state history bowl for eighth graders because in west virginia we get all that that full year west virginia studies so i thought this will be great we'll have a team of four we give away ten thousand dollars in scholarships to 14 year olds it's great it's our 15th year at fierce fierce rivalries throughout mm -hmm. the state we do eight regionals our biggest regional is here at spring mills every year we had like 28 teams last year from this area and so they are calling every after every regional who won who won so when i started that craig loved that he just loved it randall we have to do this quiz ball kiss because they did it up here somewhere maybe in maryland mm -hmm. so when he became senate president he worked with the Department of Education. This is our third year. Amazing growth. First year, 26 teams. Last year, 81 teams. This year, over 100 teams. They have seven regions. The top two teams from each region will have 14 teams the 23rd of April at the Culture Center. And you, they're already fierce rivalries. Morgantown won last year. George Washington won the year before that. Big rivalry between the two schools already. What is the subject matter being quizzed? Uh, there's 10 subjects. It's everything. Sports is a big one. Everybody, they split them up. 
every you could, history, uh, 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 current affairs, science, mathematics. It's amazing because these kids that do History Bowl, 14 years old, they're on our website studying. We have about 2,000 questions. It's all West Virginia history. But Academic Showdown is 10 subjects, and they come from the National uh, Association that does that. I have a question for you all. Are you ready to test your West Virginia history? Okay. Where was the, st where was the state capital in 1860? Richmond. Bravo! Trick question. Well, he, he's from Virginia, so. Oh, the mother state. Yeah. We were loyal Virginia. Question. Yes. West Virginia admitted as a slave state or a free state? Free. No. Slave. Absolutely. Well, yeah, there was only one. Shot. It because uh, Lincoln wanted to observe the compromises of 1830 and 1850, so we were mm -hmm. the last slave state admitted, but with stipulations that they would, uh, you know, by ages, it, it would the slavery would go away, but when the Emancipation Proclamation came, it was all moot anyway. Got another one? Best, uh, best of three. Name, name the three counties that have the same county seat as the same county name. So, the question again? Name the three counties that have the same name as their county seat. Is Greenbrier one of them? No. Okay. Down. You're out. Okay. Your turn. I'm I, we call him his dead air. Clueless. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't have a clue. Clay Wayne Logan. Okay, great question yeah. here. Here's my favorite question. I would have never guessed. So, you know, our first capital was in Wheeling. 1863 to 1870, 1870, 1875, they came to Charles, so they went back to Wheeling, 75 to 85. Then they decided to vote on what was going to be the permanent capital. What were the three final <laughs> cities? You're going to win this one too, Randall. <laughs> oh, but you're well, going to love this. You're Charleston? Love this. Yes. Wait, hey, Collins, Colin, uh, Martinsburg? Yes. See, yeah. nobody ever gets it. Yeah, I, 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 the, what's the third one? Colin, Clarksburg. Clarksburg? Okay. Wheeling was not even considered. Isn't that amazing? There's what a little idea factory that? behind the glass behind you. <laughs> Colin. Well, Colin grew up in West Virginia. Yeah, so he, exactly. he, he pointed downward, so I thought that meant Martinsburg right. when he did that, unless he meant like himself. No, it was Martinsburg was right. Oh, is he, yeah. is he cheating? Is he, he, he a prompter? Helped. He's, he's he suborning me. cheating. He's so you know my history, cheating. right? Yeah. I was a singer. I sang 20 years. Mm -hmm. I lived 14 years in Germany and always wanted to come home. So the closest job I could get to West Virginia and still go back and forth to Europe to sing. I took a teaching job at the University of Michigan. So when I was, uh, and I love, I love Coach Huggins, and I was his favorite national anthem singer. And so they cool. had me up at Kegler's to do a thing. And so Tony Caridi was like, Randall, University of Michigan. And I said, and I said to him, Tony, very simple. Anybody who goes to Michigan of their own free will gets what they deserve. <laughs> so I left after three years. Uh, Randall, what does the state need uh, as the person in charge of culture, basically, in the state, what does the state need? And I'm not talking about funds or whatever, but I'm talking about specific well, types of things. It's not always about money. What we need is for the, the biggest challenge that I have in my position is marketing. There's so many people in the state that don't even know that we have this department. We were the first state to have a comprehensive agency for the arts in the country. They don't even understand uh, the grant opportunities that we have. We have 17 grant programs for arts organizations. We have two great uh, grant programs for historic preservation. Uh, and, and then we started this STEM to STEAM grant, adding, of course, arts to uh, this, those four anchor subjects, but we're making it stream next year, adding reading. It's important to read. Mm -hmm. Do you all remember when Bette Midler met Baby Dog? At the State of the State? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 because she had made the comment. Well, yeah, she's called us illiterate. Yeah. So, the, so it worked with the governor. We started last year. West, uh, the Governor's School for Literacy through Arts, Culture, and History. We had 24 subjects. They, they came and they could study. We had 98 kids come from around the state, and they all came with their own books. They all loved to read. And, it, and when we were looking into the literacy uh, levels of West Virginia, we have 11% higher literacy rate than California, 10% higher than New York, but we want them to read at higher levels. Mm -hmm. So the governor gave us some money to start this camp. And these kids are amazing. And, you know, most times you ask kids, you have any questions? Crickets. These kids, oh, my gosh, we were running late to everything because every kid wanted to ask a question, especially higher education policy. Commissioner Chancellor, they wanted to know, they wanted to study a certain subject, what was the best college in West Virginia. 
It's it's all about just reaching kids. Mm -hmm. When I first came here, we could not fund uh, education schools because it, you couldn't fund state to state. We got some legislation change, so any extra money we have, we put it to kids in the schools. Right. I, I'm sure you're familiar with some of the programs, not just History Bowl, but uh, it's, we're in our 15th year of the, of the VH1 Save the Music Foundation grant, mm -hmm. where we put $40,000 worth of free instruments in the middle schools. Uh, this district up here of the band districts, District 9, was the first district where I funded every middle school in all those counties. We're in 156 schools right now. Do the math. It's like $6,280,000 worth of free instruments. And we only have... Uh, we're doing 12 next year. We have 14 after that. Well, all 181 kids' schools will be funded with, uh, it's like eight flutes, 11 clarinets, six trumpets, four trombones, three alto saxophones, a drum line. They get all kinds of music uh, literature. They they get music stands, which are 130 bucks a piece. They get like 36 of those. And then we work with Save the Music. They'll send 15 of our middle school teachers to the big Midwest Music Conference in uh, Chicago to, to learn all the new you know, things in music. I think what we need, if we're going to talk about cultures, we need to encourage education. As far as, uh, I studied at Indiana University with the Bobby Knight of the music school. She was tough. And she always said the most noble of all the arts is teaching. And we have to encourage more people to teach. And we definitely need music teachers, art teachers in the state. John? You're just delightful to listen to. Um, is is the film commission in your bailiwick too? Uh, the film commission is over at tourism, and it's great because we have a film commission that uh, people need to take advantage of those credits, film credits. And where do you want to do a film better than West Virginia? My goodness, we have everything. We have all four seasons. The the beauty of our state from every corner. You, you need to come here. We want you to come to West Virginia and film. That's a plug for Chelsea. But, but and they, they have finally reinstated instituted the film credit though wh yes. whereas the tax credits had been taken away for a couple of years uh yes but that that was not me i, I believe in because the historic tax credits west virginia is one of the highest states for historic tax credits mm -hmm. the, uh, the governor and legislators increased our state tax credit and they had course uh when uh Congressman McKinley was there. He was the hero of historic preservation and got the federal uh, increase. We Our tax credits now combined are 45% for uh, historic preservation tax credits. Hey, let's talk museums in the state. What museums do people have to see uh, you in have the state see of West the, Virginia? You have to see the West Virginia State History Museum. Five people before me couldn't build it. I came in and the gov and, uh, governor mansion said, get her done, Randall. So we have it. Travel Channel says if it's not the best history museum in the state, it's one of the best. Where is it? Charleston in the Culture Center. An here's another museum you have to see. West Virginia is the only state with a state Independence Hall. Where West Virginia became a state is still standing. West Virginia Independence Hall. It's in Wheeling. It was the old customs building that was built like 1858, 1859. Here's an interesting part of history. So, June 20th, 1861. West Virginia was not a state then. It was the recognized, reorganized government of Virginia. Francis Pierpont was the governor. He found the loophole because you had to have the permission of the mother state to be a state, and we knew that was not going to happen. So he created the recognized government of Virginia. All of their offices were in Independence Hall. Two years later, the vote for statehood took place in that building, and it became, uh, it was first 10 months was the, where all of the governor and secretary of state was. The building's still standing. We've done it, from, redone it top to bottom. I want every kid to see that where we became a state. And so then also we take care of the mound at, at Grave Creek Mound in Moundsville. Uh, it is our archeological collection is there. When I first came there, the archeological research center had not been finished. They were in out of money. God bless Senator Byrd. He got us the money to finish it. We went overnight from being 50 in archaeology to number one. People come from all over the world to research at the mount. It is the tallest conical mount in North America. And it is just, we just redid all of that. It's amazing. Are there uh, opportunities for professional musicians here in, in a big way? Are there, are there symphonies in West Virginia or We have three courses? major symphonies, and we fund all of them. Wheeling Symphony, oh, really which is the yet. oldest. The Charleston Symphony, which is now the West Virginia Symphony. 
Symphony and, of course, the Huntington Symphony. I sang with all of them. Yes, there's opportunities. You just got to get out and work. What is your What is your vocal range? Randall? I was a tenor. You said that past tense. Well, I'm a has been, huh? But that's better than I never was. I sang. John was a singer too. What were you, oh, John? You? Tenor, tenor, yeah. I sang. I lived in Germany 14 years. I had the same agent as Pavarotti. She was in those because in. I'm going to take a flyer here. Did you know Chris Hux? Chris Hux. Mm. Okay. You can give it a shot. But here's the other thing. They called me seven years ago, Randall. We just lost our music teacher, voice teacher. West Virginia State University. We just need you for one semester. I am in my 16th semester as adjunct. Plus these kids were having a different vocal teacher every year, sometimes too. You have to have consistency. You stabilized it. Absolutely. And I, I think I'm a very nice, sweet secretary. I'm a hard teacher. Taskmaster. Better believe it. Hey, so what's the next a uh, museum or arts and culture oh. and history building that you're working on? Right. Oh, let me tell you, we're working on great projects right now. What do you got? Okay, 1932, the Capitol building was completed. Because, you know, we had all those buildings. We had uh, the, the, the first Capitol, what I call the legislative Capitol, up in Wheeling. It's still standing. It's a law office now. Then it came to Charleston. They built it on Capitol Street. They went, of course, you know, they went back up to Wheeling because they built a bigger building. Then they built the Capitol on Capitol Street around that first building. Mm -hmm. It burned in like 22, 21, 22, 2020, 1923. They started the Capitol Building Commission. I'm chair of that today. They, so in 24, they built the West, the West Wing. Two years later, they built the East Wing. What's important about the East Wing? Cass Gilbert, who was our architect, was his, that was his next to last building he designed. The last building he designed was the United States Supreme Court. Our Supreme Court is a mini model of what became the United States Supreme Court. Then in 1928, they started the front part of the Capitol. What happened in 29? Depression. So things were not finished. So I said to the governor about a year and a half ago, now governor, since 1932, 18 governors, 19 if you count Underwood, could not put the dome murals that Cass Gilbert wanted. The first ones go up Monday. We just had the scaffolding up. We'll have the eight murals in there. There's four. If you've been at the Capitol building, you know we have the, the areas that sink in. They look like half moons. They're called lunettes. They are historical. The first one is Harper's Ferry. Then we do June 3rd, 1861. Do you know what that was? No. Battle of Philippi. It is recognized as the first land battle of the war between the states. Then we're doing, we wanted to do something music and culture. So we're doing like a chivalry, like a wedding reception in front of Seneca Rocks. It's all of West Virginia's food and crafts and music. And then the last one is an interpretation on the seal of West Virginia. It's, they, they've done a fabulous job. John Canning is out of Connecticut. Uh, back, we started this back in 2010. And uh, of course, we hit some hard times financially. We couldn't do them. But the governor gave me money to finish that. So these murals are new? Prior new brand new. They've never okay. been done. And so then there's you know, what, we, what they call pendenta, which are shields in the corners. They're allegorical. So what Cass, oh, I brought all this stuff. I should bring you the letters to Cass Gilbert inside. They're absolutely, from 1931, fabulous. He wanted uh, historical and allegorical. So the allegorical are going to be liberty, justice, education, commerce. And we will have all eight. Is there an Oxford comma in there anywhere? Oh, uh, did I, I guess it would be between the third word. It was silent. <laughs> <laughs> it was assumed. It was, it was assumed. Yeah. It was intended. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, they will all be done by the end of October. All right. And we've got about two minutes left. Do you, oh. do you continue after justice's term ends or do you have to be renewed by the next governor? Uh, I am governor appointed. So that will be up to the next governor. I'm on my third. So you've lasted. Oh, yeah. Right. How much longer do you want to do this? Well, as long as I can go. Does the cabinet level office remain? Yes, that's what's important. It's not important that I'm there. It's important that we have that cabinet level. I, it, it makes such a difference. I do the same thing I've done for 19 years, but it's such a different level of respect for the department and what we do. Here's the thing you need to know. The mission of the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture, and History is to identify, preserve, protect, promote, present 
the ideas and artifacts of West Virginia's heritage, building pride in our past accomplishments and confidence in our future. And I don't care what commas and Oxford commoner and they're not, I live that word every day. Does it, uh, and, and we're just about out of time here, but does it bother you that when there, and we haven't had that in, in six, seven, eight years now, when there are budget cuts, arts and culture seem to be the first things that get tossed? Well, back in 2014, there was an election. Things sort of changed in West Virginia. We went from blue to red. Mm -hmm. uh, Governor Moore passed away. Shelley had just become senator. We did his memorial service in our building. All the new leadership, which I knew. I worked with everybody. I don't care if you're blue, red, polka dot, or stripe, but if you're old, golden, blue, and we'll work with you. Mm -hmm. We were coming down the steps. Joe Manchin was coming up. He just looked at him and said, boys, just do what he tells you because he won't quit. <laughs> so we've always found a way. And it is important, the arts to find who we are. It's important that we, con we, that we continue to fund that so we can continue to teach the rest of the country who we are, what we are, and why we are. Well stated. Randall Reed Smith, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you.